you own all of them. But, of course, there's an interesting legal problems here. Cop shot low took them 30 years to figure out who owned what. But theoretically, it's not going to happen. Now, so that's a load claim for hard drive mining. Now, supposing, supposing we want to drill a tunnel, like we mentioned earlier, to extract the gold easier. Well, we can put one of these tunnel claims down here meaning there's no mineral there that will take out the area in order to extract the gold. Tunnel claims are five liters. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, supposing then we're out in a typical area like a river or something like that, we want to claim a plaster claim. Well, again, most plaster claims traditionally have been that same 600 by 1500. <coughs> well, well, digress a Let's say we've had the load claim again. The load claim we need to monument, that is, put a 4x4 four four post at each corner or a cairn of rocks, usually with the name of the claim. Also, another monument as to where we made the valuable discovery. This allowed everybody else to know where the claim was. To improve that claim or bring it closer to being a true mine during that year to maintain the claim. You fill out a form, uh, a form of which is uh, lower left hand corner page 53, saying that I went up and spent $100 on claim X. Now, in 1872, spending $100 worth of labor, that's a pretty good chunk of work. That has been, you know, two or three weeks up there digging holes or, or, or whatever. In 1984, doing a hundred dollars worth of work, sort of, you know, looking around saying, hey, it's pretty, and digging for a half day and go home. But you do have to file it, again, with the county, which is about three to five dollars usually, and with the BLM, which is free. So if you have 2,000 claims, that cost you a little bit earlier too. Not to mention the money you spend is on the claim if you expect that. There's ways around that. So it's just a little okay. So that's how you get your claim. Then you get a paper from the BLM, a little number on it, and that number is the same number that you'll find on the microfilm in the BLM offices, and you have your claim. So all those other good. Okay. Now, so you have a claim. What rights do you have? Well, you have exclusive rights to mine the material on the claim. If someone, if you walk up there one day and someone else has got a big bulldozer scraping dirt and putting it, processing it and taking out the gold, you can stop it. Physically or legally. Or you can sue him to get back any gold he may have recovered. You do not have a right of ownership of that claim, although we'll get to that in a moment, but in general, you do not have a right to restrict passage over the claim. In other words, if, you, if someone owns a claim that has big no trespassing signs on it, you can ignore those signs. And when he aims a shotgun at you, you can ignore that and stand on your <laughs> rights as a citizen. That doesn't stop you from shooting, of course, but at least uh, it helps a little bit. But at any rate, uh, you can pass over my claims as long as you do not disturb or endanger your safety or the safety of the people on the plane by doing so. Suppose there was large pits or something. Then they can keep you out of that or a poisonous camp or whatever. Um, the, uh, some people say, well, let's get a mining plane and build a house on Well, if, in fact, you actually are engaged in a mining operation, seriously, yeah, no problem. But a lot of times people use that to, to build a summer house. And as soon as the powers that be get a hold of that, say, oh, boy, that's interesting. I think it's time to decide if your claim is a legally valid discovery. Then they will come out and test your claim. Nine times out of ten, it will not be a legal discovery. And nine times out of ten, it will pull something out of your house without compensation. And that's legal. That's right. Because the mining law is not meant for summer houses. The mining law is meant for mine. The, uh, uh, after five years of doing assessment work, it's possible to apply for a patent. A patent means that you will actually be granted title to the land, much in the same way as you would have your, your house lot. You actually own the land. You can, then you can build houses on it. You have 
to have kept it for and do, done assessment work for five years, you must have a mineral survey, which will cost you probably between one and two thousand dollars minimum, and you will have a validity check. If all of these go through properly, you expand your money, they will actually give you title to the land. <coughs> now, back in the old days, fifty years ago, getting a patent was trivial. The land out in the middle of the desert, the government didn't care much about, and you just sort of go through the motions and you got the title to the land. Nowadays, it is very, very difficult to get a patent. We went through one hearing with the BLM <coughs> oh, about a year ago, and that fellow got a patent. And there are other stories of people getting it, but it's very rare. It does happen, but it's very rare. So don't hold out a whole lot of hope. The main problem, of course, is this, determining that your claim is valuable. They say, well, it looks valuable to me. There's a bunch of gold there. Well, yeah, there's a bunch of gold there, but you have to prove that you have enough gold that you can make a profit, pay for equipment, pay guys as the prevailing labor rates for miners, which is $15, $20 an hour. And very few claims can make all those, those things. Uh, the study of mining law 